We have lots of, we have much more on the internet right now. Uh, we have two. We could have a third one up that's like this. All, right now they're all on our property. It's my ranch. I lease it part of it to American Border Patrol. But we have ranchers who have agreed to let us put cameras on their property all along the border, out another 11 miles. And if someone's watching, would they see illegal crossing? Well, we have a protocol. We have uh, Mr. Parker, the Coast Guard guy, is kind of a supervisor. He's the administrator. He trains people. And until they really know what they're doing, we don't give them a board control number. Now, if there's something really serious, they have an emergency line to call us. But when they, after they cross the border, they know they're there, they call the border patrol. Yes, they've done this many, many times. As a matter of fact, at the not the border patrol station, I've been told in the camera room, there's a big sign up there, Bob Parker, and his telephone number in Texas. They need any help. Our camera, our thermal camera, is much, it costs $65,000. It is much more powerful than anything the Border Patrol has. And so we see stuff, they look with their cameras and they say they can't see it. Okay? We'd like to buy about a half a dozen more of those, too. Yeah, well, we need about a half a dozen more. But we, we have demonstrated the technology. We have the software where now volunteers are lying, signing themselves up. We have a user forum where they can post uh, the uh, after action reports, they can exchange information on what they see. We have worked out the entire system that can now be expanded along the border with Americans watching the border from home. Fox News did a piece of it, they called it the couch control. Glenn, yeah. What keeps um, the all right, let me just tell you, we have been experienced this for this for a long time. The, there is an unwritten rule on the smuggler's part, don't attack Gringo or his property. Don't do it. It's too obvious. It's too, they will, they, if you start doing that, the government of the United States will be forced to bring the military down and shut everything down. You don't touch it. Now sometimes they get pressed a little hard. Uh, on June 5th, Mike Christie was on a quad driving down over to, to over to 92, and he just happened to bump into a drug smuggler coming north along our road. The drug smuggler turned down the diagonal, and Mike went down the normal road to see where he went. And he, when he turned right on border road, this guy turned left and was heading right for him as fast as he could go, and he was going to run Mike down. Mike is a former police officer. He had to have this big, big six gun on his side, picked it up and pointed at the guy. And at the last second before he had his head blown off, he turned the vehicle right into Mexico through the fence. A day later, they came up to some, Mike saw some people down on the border, and he thought they wanted water. He took the water jug down. We have this on camera, by the way. And they didn't want that. They said, uh, my boss sent me down here. They wanted to know how much you want to drive through the ranch. So they were offering us money to try to do the red. Isn't that right, Mike? $20,000. $20,000 or more. You said name your price. So we, we turned them down. A couple weeks later, we had two quads parked out. We never really worried about anything. We left them out parked in front of the house. One, the next Monday morning, one of the guys got on one and drove it down to the other part of the ranch and it caught on fire. We said, oh, it's a fire wiring problem. Only problem is the other guy got the next one that was parked right next to it. The next day, drove it down here, caught on fire at the same spot. The, the, the insurance company said this was sabotage. And it, they burned up our, they, they tried to hurt us. Because they put the fire thing right on the exhaust right next to the gas tank. Yeah, well, they wanted to make it very subtle. They don't want a frontal assault. So we think the cameras would be all right. Uh, the, the Border Patrol has cameras. We've never seen any evidence that they're attacking any of these cameras. We've had one camera up there for seven or eight months. We haven't touched it. Well, just some questions, if I could. And I think everybody might be interested in this, but I've been trying to get my arms around for some time. That is, how much total distance needs to be secured? Well, it's like 2,000 miles, but it's, in, in reality, uh, Probably around 1,400 miles. About 1,400. How much do you feel that 
deal with things done, whether it's adequate or inadequate. 105 miles. It's not as inadequate. 105? 105 miles of fencing. Okay. Not being able to bear Right. And a lot of it's just so useless. So, and adequate fencing is about at adequate? About 20 miles. Well, see, that puts, puts it all in perspective. And that's when we communicate these things, we go back to our cities. These are the reality of the truth. Absolutely. And when you say it's only. Uh, what about uh, Duncan Hunter's fence? I said 20 miles has been secure. Oh, 10 miles of that is Duncan Hunter's. Everybody's been saying 13 miles. It's not. It's 10 miles. 10 miles. Believe me. We know. The last three miles, everybody's been saying it's been completed. It isn't. It's in Smuggler's Gulch. Hewitt Construction just got the contract to finish that three miles. Even Duncan Hunter was reporting 13 miles. Until we send him pictures. Have many of the inadequate fences ever been replaced or repaired? Yeah, we've seen them repair them. We were repairing it yesterday morning. Uh, one of the uh, Parker Colby says, is somebody over on the fence? Yeah. So zoomed in on it, called the board, called. They said they're working on repairing We see that we have lots of fixtures of them welding the fence and repairing the fence. It has to be a double fence. You saw that stuff stacked up against the fence when they just come up and come up right over it. You saw where they can drive a vehicle up. I can show you hundreds of photographs where their trucks and vehicles stacked up along the fence. That's stupid. It's not a fence, it's a stairway. So the double fence was Yeah. Those incidents when they were screened over snap ties of cars, they used a double fence. Well, they're doing what? Well, to cut, to decapitate the border patrol. Yeah, but they figured out a way to stop that. But, yeah, but it's going to get ugly. And you know why they don't want to build this fence? Because they don't want it to get ugly. Because I think it's getting ugly in Mexico because of those vehicle barriers that they are building, especially the ones you saw by Yuma. That really has caused a real problem for them. And the last thing our government wants you to know is that there is a relationship between what they're doing along the border and what's happening in Mexico. Why? They'll want more of it. And then they'll also ask, why the heck didn't we do it 50 years ago? So you can understand the situation they're in. We're trying to force them to do what is right, and they're trying to keep them doing what's right. That's the fight. And we're in it, and the three of us are all of American war. Thomas Jefferson said one man of courage is a majority. What's that? Thomas Jefferson said one man of courage is a majority. I see. Thomas Jefferson is my favorite president. Thank you. One of the reasons was he read, read, could keep me a mathematic at Go ahead. And he was familiar with the calculus and physics. You can sit down with, with Thomas Jefferson today and discuss uh, uh, orbits of, of uh, orbiting vehicles and you would know exactly what you were talking about. Did you know that? Sure. That's what I, I remember. Calculus and physics was all about it. it, 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 it Newton wrote it. Right. And uh, the, yeah. Jefferson was very familiar with it. And it, you know, you know ever hear with, with the, what uh, Kennedy said about Jefferson? He had a collection at a dinner one night with all of his known Nobel laureates uh, uh, of the United States. He had his huge dinner table and he said, there's more brilliance in this room tonight. There's never been more brilliance in this room tonight except when Thomas Jefferson dined alone. He's an amazing man. All right. How many cameras would it take all the way across? Well, uh, we're talking the camera every 20 miles. So if you had 2,000 cameras, 2,000 miles with 100 cameras. Let's say 10 into uh, 10 miles would be 200, 20 miles would be 100. Can you need a camera every 10 miles? 10 miles, okay, 200 cameras. 